Happy Tuesday. How you doing, huh? Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. My entourage is not available today. I had to get myself fixed up. How do I look? Can you tell? The rest of my life is the best of my life. Hey, you need prayers answered today. Call me, because I am in the mood to get somebody's prayers answered, huh? We do this every day, all day long. <clears throat> this is probably the only large ministry in the country where you can actually talk to the minister. I believe if you partner with the ministry, you should have access to the minister. Hey, you're going to get an email or a text message today telling you about the video, but you're going to get another text message that says, if you want to get these text messages every day, reply yes to that text message. Okay? And we will put you on the everyday list. <clears throat> Not every, we have a lot of people, thousands and thousands and thousands of people on our list. But not everybody wants to get these every day. Some people are okay with getting them once a week. But if you want to be alerted every day for the new message and the new video, then reply yes to the text message when you get that today. Okay? Also, when you donate today and do your offerings and your tithe, which some people donate on Tuesday. Call me because I want to speak the word for word blessing over you at the same time. Hey, I want to talk to you right now about the fact that your problems are not your fault. This is huge because in this day when everybody says, well, you got to take responsibility. Not necessarily. Nobody wants to take responsibility. You know what? Sometimes I do take responsibility. If I make a mistake and I do something wrong, I go to the Lord and I say, Lord, I made a mistake. Now, it's not I'm not talking about sin necessarily. I'm just talking about doing something that not the right way. You know, because there's... Let's face it, sometimes we don't know how to do something. David, when he didn't know how to do something, he inquired of the Lord. Sometimes, I, in the past, I have not inquired of the Lord. So if I do it wrong, or if there's something I don't know how to do, I will go to the Lord and say, Lord, I made a mistake. Please help me fix this. And he does every single time. But, <clears throat> I had a terrible problem. Actually, several terrible problems. One of them was debt. <clears throat> we were being crushed by debt. <clears throat> Absolutely crushed by debt. I had another problem. Trying to get my bills paid. Every month, Right up until the last day of the month, we was believing. Now, we had strong faith, so we always got our bills paid. But sometimes it was it didn't happen until the last day of the month. I had a problem with a kidney stone. And I mean to tell you, but God healed that. I haven't had one since. I had problems a few years ago, probably... Oh, this has been seven or eight, maybe nine years ago. I don't remember when. But I had a, a terrible problem. I had a huge, bad case of bronchitis. And it was almost pneumonia, the doctor said. Could not get healed. I want you to know something all these problems had in common. None of them were my fault. None of them were my fault. Some of you people watching me right now are in debt. 
Some of them, you are in debt up to your, what we call up to your eyeballs. I mean, really in debt. I got news for you. Not your fault. Some of you have got chronic sickness going on. Some cancer, heart disease, arthritis, back aches, stomach aches, headaches. I got news for you. Not your fault. Not your fault. I got lit up a few years ago before I wrote this book. Now what we're teaching right now comes out of this book. And I saw in Luke chapter 13 the woman in the temple who was bent over for she had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Jesus called her over. He said, be loosed from that infirmity. Out the door it went. And he touched her, laid his hand on her, and immediately she went from like this and she straightened up and was able to live a normal life. And she praised God. Well, the people in the temple, the rulers of the temple, became indignant. How many of you know when somebody gets healed, everybody's not always happy? We had a miracle healing up in Wisconsin years ago. A man totally paralyzed on his left side for six months following a stroke. And he was dying in, in the uh, nursing home. I mean, they just let him lay there to die. And they were praying for him. Our whole church was praying for him. And I said, don't pray for him. Pray for me. I'll go see him. Well, they got, they didn't like that. I went over there, led him to the Lord. And then I said, do you believe God can heal you? He said, I hope so. He said, I hope so. He was totally healed. Within three weeks, he was up walking around. Within three months, he walked his daughter down the aisle for her wedding. I mean, God healed him. The people in the church were angry with me because I had done that. Let me tell you something, folks. When God's moving in your life, everybody ain't happy for you. Amen? But that man laying there, his problems were not his fault. When sick people come into our church, we don't deal with the people. Well, maybe you need to eat better. You need to get more exercise. You need to lose some weight. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. We don't do that. When people come into our church and they're broke, we don't say, well, you got to stop spending money you don't have for things you don't need. We don't do that. Let me show you what Jesus did in the temple. He didn't tell that woman, well, your problem is arthritis or your problem is, is osteoporosis. And it runs in your family and... Blah, blah, blah. Jesus didn't do that. He did not deal with the woman. He dealt with what was causing the problem. He always did. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil oppressed by the devil. Now, in Luke chapter 13, verse 16, Jesus is explaining what happened. He said, shouldn't this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, covenant woman, a covenant person deserves healing, folks. We'll talk about that later. But shouldn't this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 years, Jesus blamed the woman's problems on the devil. He blamed her problems on the devil. And sometimes we need to do the same thing. Sometimes when people, people come into my church and they're broke and they've been broke all their life, I know the problem is not their fault. People are sick with cancer and heart disease. Let me tell you something, folks. It is not their fault. Amen. You've made bad decisions all your life. I got news for you. Your bad decisions are not your fault. They're inspired by the wrong people and the wrong spirits. 
Look at this. In this book, Jesus, I have a chapter, or not a chapter, but a, an area, a heading, that says, Whose fault is that? You can see this is my book, so I mark it up. I take notes in the books. Whose fault is that? Good Christian people are sick and broke at an alarming rate. Whose fault is that? It's not the people. It's the same thing that caused that woman's problems in the temple. If Jesus blamed that woman's problems on the devil, you should start blaming your problems on the devil. Because he's the one behind it. Let me tell you something. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Every bad thing that goes on in this earth is the devil's fault. Not people. People steal from you. They lie to you. They deceive you. They cheat you. Not their fault. You can call it all back. You can bind the devil. And you can declare, Luke chapter 18, Jesus said, God will avenge you quickly of your adversary. Your adversary is never people. It's always the devil who inspires people to cheat you and lie to you and steal your inheritance and steal this and steal that. It's always the devil that does that. It is never people. Don't ever blame your problems on other people. It's not their fault either. If, ever, if, ever, if nothing is your fault, it's not their fault either. Put the blame where the blame should go. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Bind him. If you keep him bound in your life, you will live an unhindered life. Why do you think Brother Copeland and Keith Moore and Creflo and those people live such good lives? Let me tell you why. They keep the devil bound in their life. Me, I bind the devil every day. In my life, in the life of my family, everybody in my church, and all of my partners. If you're a partner with me, know that I am binding the devil in your life every day, every morning. Because I can do that. If you're my partner, I have the spiritual authority to do that. I also have the spiritual authority to pray for you and to speak blessings over you and to cast out and break curses and things like that. I do not have the authority to tell you how to live. And so I don't. I do not have the authority to make decisions for you. But I have the authority to keep the devil out of your life. Is that you okay with that? I hope so. I hope so. The divorce rate is at an all-time high. Whose fault is that? It's not the people, it's the devil. Suicide is one of the leading causes of death, especially among young people. Whose fault is that? It's the devil's. Amen? Hey, I'm out of time, but you get the picture. You got problems going on. You call me. I will deal with the source of that problem in your life. I'll get rid of it. I'll bind the devil in your life. I'll break every curse. I'll break the curse of the law. And then I'll make sure you live an unhindered life. And when you live an unhindered life, you're going to live a blessed life. Just like Brother Copeland and Creflo and all those people do. That's how I want you to live. You're supposed to live that way. Call me today if you need this done. Let me help you with this. I know how to do this. Glory to God. Also call me if you need prayers answered. Amen. Hallelujah. I am out of time. Uh, also, call me when you do your offerings and donations today. Have a wonderful day. I love you very much.